since the early 80s, video games have been more than just another way to cash in on the latest anime craze. It's given fans the chance to be their favorite characters and save the world at the same time. Everything from Mazinger Z to Cowboy Bebop to Neon Genesis Evangelion has made their mark on the gaming world for better or for worse. Anime-based games had their beginnings with such 8-bit titles like the sci-fi adventure Red Beam Zillion and the Kujaku Peacock King series, known here as Spellcaster, and its 16-bit sequel, Mystic Defender. Soon, CD-ROM-friendly consoles allowed for full-motion video, and in no time, anime games took advantage of this format. Ah, uh, take them off, you moron. Fuchikoma. Just do your job and help the rookie. Notable games in the past include Magic Knight Ray Earth and Ghost in the Shell. But since many of these releases are merely merchandising tie-ins, lots of titles tend to fall flat. Two franchises that have boasted poor track records in gaming are the Mobile Suit Gundam and Dragon Ball series. It was a matter of time before countless original titles not based on any anime were produced. Prime examples include Sonic Team's Burning Rangers, an action game that featured a futuristic firefighting team, and Guardian Heroes, a hectic adventure beat-em-up that allowed for up to six players at a time. I've got you now, Nutscracker! Companies like Working Designs and Atlas have based their whole software lineup on these types of games, releasing such classics as Popful Mail, Lunar, and Tail Concerto. It's obvious these games have made an impact on the rest of the industry. Even U.S. developers have since attempted to capture the anime look, most notably with the overhyped Oni by Bungie. As the appeal of anime continues to grow, so too will the appeal of its video game offshoots. The quality might not be there with every release, but don't expect that to stop the average fan from stepping into the shoes of their favorite giant robot or superhero.